Hi, my name is Kenga Sivaraja, and here is another podcast for obstetrics and gynaecology. Today I'm going to be talking about shoulder dystocia. First of all, we're just going to go through some of the learning points. So I'm going to talk about what shoulder dystocia actually is, risk factors for shoulder dystocia, how to manage it when it occurs on labour ward, and complications that occur after it has happened. So shoulder dystocia is actually one of the greatest obstetric emergencies. It occurs when there is the bony impaction of the anterior shoulder of the baby behind the pubic symphysis of the mother. Sometimes it can occur when the posterior shoulder of the baby gets stuck behind the sacral promontory of the mother. So I'm just going to talk a bit about the risk factors of shoulder dystocia. So before the birth, often diabetic mothers are more at risk of having babies which can have shoulder dystocia. This is because the large levels of glucose in the mother can lead to the baby producing more insulin and therefore becoming larger or macrosomic. When the baby is very large, it's often difficult to come out of the pelvic inlet and this is when the anterior shoulder can get stuck behind the pubic symphysis. Often mothers with a high BMI also have diabetes during pregnancy. Additionally, if the mother has had a previous shoulder dystocia birth, then this can be an increased risk for the next birth. So risk factors during labour often occur if there is a prolonged first stage of labour, or a prolonged second stage of labour, i.e. when the mother has been pushing for a long time. Additionally, instrumental deliveries, such as Vontus and forceps, can increase the risk. Also, ladies who have had augmentation of labour, so their contractions have slowed down, and they've been given something like oxytocin to increase their contractions, are also at risk of this. So, what are the signs of shoulder dystocia? It is often termed a turtleneck sign, where the head remains tightly attached to the vulva. If there is any difficulty in delivering the head, or the failure of the anterior shoulder to deliver, or the failure of the restitution of the head, everyone on labour ward becomes alerted that this may be a case of shoulder dystocia. So I'm just going to start talking about the management of shoulder dystocia. Now with the management, obviously seconds count because this can lead to the death of the baby and also harm to the mother. So here's just a simple way of remembering how to manage shoulder dystocia and in fact it spells out helper. So first of all, call for help. If you notice that the baby may be undergoing shoulder dystocia, call the senior midwife, a senior obstetrician, the SHO, a neonatologist and an anaesthetist. Further pushing from the mother should be stopped as this can aggravate the situation further. At this point you want to evaluate for an episiotomy, okay, because this may give you room later to do the internal manoeuvres which I'm going to talk about. So first of all, legs. This is called McRoberts position. The lady is laid flat and the thighs are hyperflexed to the abdomen. If this doesn't deliver the baby, then both the midwife and the obstetrician should put suprapubic pressure on the pelvis. First just the hands firmly down and then in a rocking fashion. The majority of shoulder dystocias are then delivered at this point. E is for enter. Now we must enter the vagina and this is where the episiotomy comes in useful because it just gives you more room to manoeuvre. Now these have lots of names which you don't have to remember as an undergraduate but they are always useful. So wood screws manoeuvre is when the hand enters the vagina and the middle fingers are placed on the posterior aspect of the anterior shoulder. You then try and move the baby forward. If this fails You can then put the other hand on the anterior aspect of the posterior shoulder and then attempt a rotation. These are tricky manoeuvres 
which should only be carried out by an experienced obstetrician. If this fails, you can do a reverse wood screws manoeuvre. This time, your hand is placed on the posterior aspect of the posterior shoulder. An attempt is made to rotate the other way. There are of course other things which you can try, but by this time, minutes would have passed. You can also try removing the posterior arm. You can then get the lady to roll over on all fours and try all these manoeuvres again. Other strategies which have been used in the past are things like fracture of the clavicle and the Zavanelli manoeuvre, which involves basically pushing the baby back in and attempting a C-section. There are of course lots of complications because this is such a dangerous condition. So while the baby is trapped within the pelvic inlet, you can get fetal hypoxia. Additionally, you can also get damage to the brachial plexus, leading to herbs or clumkies palsy. And, of course, if you fracture the clavicle, then this is obviously harm to the baby. In terms of the mother, you can actually get uterine rupture because of all the pushing and pressing on the uterus. You can get perineal tears, and this is also one of the risk factors, as we discussed before, of postpartum hemorrhage. So this is just a quick kind of overview of shoulder dystocia. We've defined what it is. We've defined that maternal diabetes and fetal macrosomia are risk factors. We went through the management, which spells helper quite usefully. And we've said that it's actually a big risk to both the mother and the baby.